What up, you mateys? Today we be making gold. And really bad eggs. Okay, so if you've ever tried to make gold like I have, you've probably run into a few frustrations. One, it's not a color, so we can't just slap on a background node and call it a day. It's a texture, so we have to deal with lighting, changing color, reflections, all that sort of stuff. So the way to do it is with the texture map which gets confusing all on its own. First off, everybody calls it something different. It's albedo, or if it's the diffuse, or RGB. And to make things more confusing, Fusion has like four different texture nodes with all different inputs. So what I'm gonna do is show you how I did it, and hopefully that'll give you enough information to do it on your own. Let's go. Okay, first we're gonna need the texture maps. I'm gonna to go to a place called Ambient CG, just search gold, and you should find these two results. I'm gonna download both of them, and I'll show you later how we can mix these colors together. But as you can see, even from these two, the difference in gold textures can vary quite a bit. So you might get a map from somewhere else and it'll look completely different. So if you use different texture maps, you're gonna to have to make your own subtle adjustments. I'm gonna use these two just for my sanity. Next up, we'll need an HDRI from Polyhaven. I'm gonna use this Wide Street 01. So here's where we run into our first problem. The standalone version of Fusion Studio will take HDRIs directly, but inside DaVinci Resolve, Fusion won't. You'll have to convert it to an EXR. You can use whatever you want. I'm going to use Convertio. I'm going to drag in my file, drop it in. Make sure you click on EXR to convert it to an EXR. And then once it's done converting it, you can download it. Now that we have all our components, I'm just going to add them into a new Fusion Comp. Hit F2 to rename everything so you don't get lost. Now if you click on your EXR, you'll notice that it doesn't look quite right. That's because it's in a different color space than the rest of the comp. I'm not going to go into detail why this is. It's There's a linear color space, and RGB, Basically what we need to do is convert it. So to do that, we're going to use a color corrector or a brightness contrast. Then we're going to up the gain to 2.2. Lots of programs like Nuke do this. Technically, I think we're supposed to convert it using a gamut node, but this works just fine. We can always disable this node later if we don't need it. One of the issues you'll have if you don't do this is that it won't look right on the edit page. If I connect up my media out and view it on the edit page, you'll see it looks the same. This won't always be the case, especially if you don't have the view let set up. Right now it's set to Fusion, and if I click Edit, I can see the settings. I haven't changed any settings, but yours might be off by default, so make sure you turn it on. If I click this grid, I can turn on and off whatever LUT I have selected. So just make sure what you see in Fusion is what you're going to see on the edit page. Sometimes if you add in a glow or a blur, it'll make it look drastically different from the Fusion page to the edit page. Now let's get started building our material. Continue with the HDR image. We need a sphere map to properly wrap it around our object. Now we can combine it with our other maps using a reflect node. The HDR's main purpose is to give us some reflection, since metals are pretty reflective. If you have an HDR that matches your environment better, then swap it out for one after we set everything else up. The sphere map should be going into the reflect color input. Hold Alt or Option when connecting it to bring up the input menu. Now you can see some of the reflections. Go ahead and crank up the glancing and face strength. The reflections are pretty strong right now, but we'll fix that later. Go ahead and spread out your maps and focus on the normal map. To get this working correctly, we have to use a bump map node. A normal map basically adds fake detail to an object by indicating what direction the light is coming from and how it's interacting with the surface. You can see some bumps and scratches on here. This won't change the geometry of our object, but it'll make it look like it does. Add in the bump map, put it into the bump map texture, and change it to bump map. We might change it back to height map later, but for now we'll just go with the bump map. Go to the sphere map and change its rotation. This isn't necessary, but I like the way it looks better, so I'm going to use these angles. Okay, now let's combine our two gold colors. To do this, we're going to need a channel boolean, the 3BOL. If you've ever used something like Blender, boolean is just a fancy way of combining things. Let's view our color maps in the viewers. Now if we look in the combined, we get nothing. That's because we need to change the operation from A to A plus B. Don't worry about the alpha, there's no alpha in the color maps. That's elsewhere. We successfully combined our colors. Now it doesn't look like gold, but remember, we have to add in all the ingredients to make it come out looking right. So let's go ahead and add this into our reflect node. To do that, we'll use a material node called cook torrents. I have no idea what that term means. Add your color to the diffuse color. Remember, diffuse just means color like albedo does. Now take the output of the cook torrents and put it in the background material. Now let's dial back the reflections by adding a blur node. Set the blur to 30. 
The blur causes a little bit of weirdness, but we can fix that with a color corrector. Change the tint to 0.1 and the strength to 0.45. This will tint our reflections so they blend in with the gold material better. Now let's add in our roughness map. If you have different texture, you may get a metallic map instead. This is just the inverse of a roughness, so add in an invert color node to use it as a roughness map. It depends on the program that you got the map from and the program that's going to use the map. Roughness maps basically determine how shiny or dull a surface is. Add a channel booleans, this is different than the one we used before. We need the channel booleans to shift the alpha information into the color channel. If you've ever used like dust or smoke and it had a black background and you set the composite type to screen, we're basically doing the same thing here. We're gonna shift the alpha into the color channel. So go ahead and just change the alpha to red. You can choose any color really, but we'll just go with red. Now add it as the roughness material and the channel boolean as the specular intensity. You could also use it as a specular color. It's really not gonna make a big difference in this case, but it may with different maps. Again, in this case, we're using the roughness as specular too. I'm getting this part from Vito's Labux tutorial. This is how he did it, so don't ask me any more on it. Now on the cook torrents, bring the diffuse all the way down, set specular to one, 0 0.5, and zero. Also turn off for now. I'll attempt to show exactly what this is doing, but for now, let's combine the reflect and cook torrents. Right now, Cook Torrance is just affecting the reflection, but we want all that color information too. So copy and paste the channel boolean we used to mix the colors and connect Reflect and Cook Torrance to it. If I disconnect some of these inputs, you can see the difference it makes. The specular is adding an extra layer of shine on top of our texture. It's small in this case, but again, different maps have different results. Here you can see it a bit better. Okay, now that we know what that's doing, go ahead and turn the color all the way back up. Now that we have our maps mixed together, let's go ahead and put it on a 3D object so we can see how it works. Add in a 3D shape, a camera 3D, and an ambient light. Also add in a replace material to change the material of the shape to what we've created. For best results, I like to use a torus. Flat shapes don't look as good unless you use a displacement map to distort the mesh. Click this little shading icon to see it better. Change the subdivisions to 100 and the section width to 0.2. Now if we view the replace material, that's looking a lot more like gold, but we're not done. We need to merge it all together with a merge through D and then use a render node. Change the position of the camera, set Z or Z to 10. You can see that the reflections are now messed up. We need to change the render type to OpenGL and turn on lighting. I'm gonna rotate the torus so we can see it better. We can change the color of the torus by changing the intensity of the light or by adding a color corrector. Set this one to 0 0.085 on tint and 0 0.32 on strength. Set gain to 1.1 and gamma to 0 0.76. You can also adjust the base colors with color correctors. I'll show you what values I used. I was going for a very specific look with this, maybe for an upcoming tutorial, hint, hint, but adjust it to whatever look that you're going for. You can also adjust the lighting color if something looks a little bit off. If you want to add in a little extra detail, you can go to the bump map, change it to height, and crank up the scale. But that's how you make the gold color using texture maps. I decided to go the extra mile on this though, and I created a shader using only fusion assets. You can find it in the link below, download it, install it, you'll find it under effects, templates, fusion, and dabbler. I have two there just because I already installed it. Once you have it, you'll just need to plug in an HDR image and a shape. You can even use 3D text in place of the shape. You'll probably need to correct the HDR like we did before. It doesn't look quite as good as the texture maps, but it'll get you started. And I did add in a few controls so you can vary the look a bit. You can change the scratch amount as well as the height. You can reverse the scratches and make them look a little more like bumps. You can even add in some surface grime. So have a play with that, have some fun, see if it helps you. And as always, you can open it up and change it however you want. That does it for me. Be sure to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.